bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. We exalt you, Lord. We bless you, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Master. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, thank you, Lord. He's rescued my soul. His love is covered by sins. I believe. Away. My shame is taken away, and my 
my brothers and sisters we are here because Jesus is alive we are here because Jesus was present is present in our lives my brothers and sisters my brothers and sisters we are here because Jesus has said come to me all those who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest and that is why we are here at the beginning we must have been lost in this world but then we came to Jesus. We came with heavy hearts. We, we came with sorrowful minds. And that is what brought us closer to Jesus. And he said that he will give uh, gives us rest. The kind of rest that he gives us is the rest where we can praise and worship him no matter what we go through, no matter what we face in our lives. We, we have that rest. We have the strength to praise and worship him. So no matter what you have in your heart right now, my brothers and sisters, just raise your hand and praise the Lord. Praise our God. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Father. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise you Lord, bless you Lord Sing unto the Lord a new song Sing unto the Lord all the earth Sing unto the Lord a new song Sing unto the Lord all the earth Sing unto the Lord a new song
thank you jesus yes my brothers and sisters i want to share you something happened today to me this when someone messaged me today to come to the do the praise and lead the worship i was having these thoughts i was nervous i told him no i'm i just stand behind i don't want to just lead it because i am getting nervous when i come in front but the lord spoke to me directly why do you want to limit me with your thoughts when you he just showed me some things i was reading this passage from luke chapter 1 and he showed me this beautiful thing which happened to zehariah the father of st john the baptist when he was when jesus works unexpectedly when you are in fear when you don't have this trust in him he will come he will call you by his name he calls you by your name and he called me he told me why why are you doing this he showed me this message when zaharia was he was old in that time he was old and he didn't have child so he he was unexpe- he was not expecting a uh, angel to come to visit him when he was working for lord he was lighting the incense he he was in the church he was doing the work and suddenly this angel angel gabriel appeared to him and he asked him he, he was feared as as soon as he saw uh, the angel he was feared he didn't know what to do he asked who is this and he told i am coming from the lord i am he introduced himself he said i am gabriel i came here to sh- tell you a good news and it is you are going to get a child and he had this doubt he thought it, it is not going to work and i am already old so then gabriel told no this is the lord's message he is showing you he is telling you this is going to happen since you don't believe and it was not a punishment for him it was a confirmation for him he told that you will go mute now and when the child comes you will speak at the same time that fear he was having these doubts and at the same time when he came out of that place the 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 incense after he came out he saw his the people he was not able to talk he was mute but lord our lord is really great he showed this message to me at the same time after the child was born when they asked him what is what are you going to call him and he said it is going to be john because the angel said that it is going to be the name for the child and when he told it was open so at the same time the same thing happened he, this was a believer and there was one person who was a non believer and it is saul who is called paul he, who transformed when he was in the journey when he was going and he was not a believer so you can be today in this crowd you can be a non believer you can be here with a compulsion lord talks to you as well he says he opens the he showed me he showed telling when he came and he got that paul believed in him and he opened opened he, he, he couldn't see he got, he got blind and then the same thing happened after some time after 3 4 days when ananian came and he prayed over he confirmed that he can do that and he opened that doors and today you can be having the same problems you can face these problems he told he can do for me he can do for you just trust the lord believe in him trust in him what all the fear you can be with the fear you come out with the fear come out to the lord he will help you he will take into you thank thank you lord thank you jesus praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah
Jesus, as you are here, present, powerfully present amongst us, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we surrender this rest of the meeting into your hands while we hand it over to you, Lord Jesus. We believe that Mother Mary is interceding for each and every one of us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Mother Mary, and as we thank you for her, Lord Jesus, for interceding on behalf of us, Lord Jesus, let us say, Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Good evening, brothers and sisters. We'd like to welcome you for this evening's meeting. And are there any newcomers today? Okay, so the announcements. A single and Tamil meeting is held every Friday at 6.30 p.m. at St. Lawrence's Church Hall. The same message that is preached here will be preached in Singhala and Tamil. So we kindly re invite you to spread the word around for all who speak Singhala and Tamil living in Colombo and encourage them to attend this meeting. There are two other English prayer meetings held weekly in Colombo. That's on Saturday at St. Anthony's Church, Mount Lavinia, at 6.30 p.m. and on Tuesday at Sacred Heart Church Rajkiri at 9.30 a.m. So if you missed the Wednesday message, you could attend these meetings and also evangelize by spreading the word around to encourage people to attend these meetings. We encourage you to come forward and claim the words of knowledge after the prayer meeting for the glory of God. The claiming not only brings you healing and delivery, but will also build the faith of so many others who are here and also watching online. This Wednesday and next Wednesday, we will not have the crash. So just these two Wednesdays only, this Wednesday and next Wednesday. And also, uh, we will not have the Friday morning meeting at St. Lawrence's. That's this coming Friday and the following Friday. So the evening meetings will take place, but not the morning meeting on Friday at St. Lawrence's. The senior citizens meeting will be held this Sunday, that's the 4th of June, at 10 a.m. at St. Anthony's Church Hall, Colpity. There will be a desk behind the hall to collect contributions for the flood victims. So you could bring, and, uh, bring whatever you like next Wednesday, or you could drop it off at Tabo tomorrow from between 10 and 2 p.m. So Tabo will be open, but they will receive contributions between 10, uh, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And uh, for any further information, you could, find out, you could find it out from the desk that is had here, or you could give Tabo a call. And please note that they will not be collecting cash or clothes. So any other items such as dry rations, soap, toothpaste, etc., can be provided. And you could call Tabo or visit the desk for further information. There's a testimony. Praise the Lord. Two weeks ago, there was a word of knowledge about a person getting choked. I was having a cough, and I used to get choked most of the time. It's been two weeks now with no choking and no cough, and I am completely healed. And thankful to God for the healing that he has given me. All praise to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the perpetual lights of heaven are shining here. So uh, Lalitata and the team, uh, they have gone to Rome uh, to celebrate the 50th year of the charismatic renewal, the beginning of the charismatic renewal. Uh, it has been 50 years since it started. And uh, Pope Francis, His Holiness Pope Francis, has invited all the communities of the Charismatic Renewal uh, to come to Rome to celebrate this event together with the Feast of Pentecost this Sunday on the 4th of June. So uh, we lift them up in prayer that the Lord will do a mighty thing that day. And also we should uh, lift up, uh, there are uh, some people uh, who are having an issue with the visas and couldn't go. So we'll, today we'll lift them up also, especially to the Lord, that the Lord will open a way for them to 
uh, go there. And also, uh, two more things uh, we should pray for. One is uh, uh, Mario, not this Mario, but there's another Mario in our youth uh, who is uh, suffering with cancer, and the doctors have given up. But the, when the doctors give up, Jesus can do a miracle. So we'll pray in a special way for him. And most importantly, uh, today we'll pray for our nation. Uh, to what has happened to our nation, that there are many lives lost, uh, many things, people have lost their belongings. Uh, that, you know, uh, God, Jesus, he is the father of us all. You know, all of us are God's children. And he doesn't want anybody to suffer. So we'll lift our nation up in a special way that the Lord will uh, lift his mighty hand over our nation and over all the nations that are affected by this. And the Lord will do the impossible because he is the one who commanded the sea and the storm to be still. And with one word, he did it. So let's ask the Lord to do that in our nation, in our country, in all these situations, Lord. You are the maker of heaven and earth, the one who created the seen and the unseen, the mighty in God who created all things. Yes, Lord. Lord. We lift all these things up into your hands, Lord. Stretch forth your sovereign hand, your mighty right hand over all these things and do the impossible, Lord. Only you can do what men cannot do, Lord. Lord, we invite you in every situation, Lord. Display your power, display your glory and do a mighty miracle in everything, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is Lift up the praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You do the impossible, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the God of miracles. Hallelujah. Do the impossible. Make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord. Create a way, Lord. Because we believe in you. We trust in you, Lord. You are the God of glory, the King of heaven, the one who is glorified eternally from the everlasting to the everlasting King of heaven. We invite you. Come Holy Spirit. Come into this situation. Come into our midst and do the impossible. Create a way. Break through Lord. Break through the obstacles. Break through the barriers Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Lord. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. And we sing today. There is no problem too big that God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too, uh, too tall that he cannot move it. Yes, he who carried the sin of the world, he who carried the weight of the world, and what is sin? Sin is to not know the Creator. That's ultimately what sin is. Sin is to not know Him. And everything that happens in this world, in this life, is because we have lost our connection with the Father. We have lost our connection with our Creator. And that's why we are suffering. That's why there's pain. That's why there's death. And that's why everyone is suffering. And he who carried the sin of the world will carry you. We we'll sing it to this nation. We we'll sing it to our lives. We we'll sing it to everyone who is affected. That the Lord himself is able to carry us. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You carry us, Lord, with the mighty presence of your spirit. Spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Psalm 91 verse 1 many times we read this psalm as a psalm of protection as a psalm that God protects us but there's a tremendous secret in Psalm 91 1 it says he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place of God is His presence because we can't go there by our strength. No matter how good we are, no matter what we have done, no matter our, our devotions, our prayers, we can't go there by ourselves because it's God who reveals it in His grace, His presence. And he who lives in that place, not he who visits, not he who comes and goes, but he who lives in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow of God shall fall on his life because he will walk with God himself. That's why his shadow falls on that person. And to that person, all the promises of Psalm 91 becomes true. It says, he shall not fear the arrow that flies by day. It doesn't say the arrow will not come, but it says he will not fear the arrow that flies by day. He shall not fear the terror of night. It does not say the terror of night will not come, but he shall not fear the terror that comes in the darkness. A thousand shall fall at his right, ten thousand at his left, but it shall not come his way. What does that mean? It does not mean that you will nothing will nothing wrong will happen to you. It means when everything goes wrong, you shall not be shaken within you. Why? Because you are walking in the shadow of the Almighty. His shadow is upon your life. And he continues to say at the end of Psalm 91, Because he has known my name, I shall bless him with long life. What does that mean? Because Jesus has become real within us. Because he has known my name, the name of the Lord is Jesus Christ. Because he has known my name, I will bless him with long life. Long life is eternal life and peace in every single crisis that we face. Yes, that's what he carried. That's what he carried to the cross. That's what when we sing, when he carried the weight of the world, he carried that very separation that was with God himself. He carried that to the cross and crucified it on the cross, becoming our sin, becoming the very separation that we had with God and made a way. Yes, we'll sing that song again, him again, and we'll sing it in faith for ourselves for our lives the one who carried the sin of the world lives in my life lives in my heart and he will lead me hallelujah lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise you father hallelujah hallelujah lord hallelujah praise you lord hallelujah thank you jesus for you made the way for us lord hallelujah hallelujah praise you lord hallelujah Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is no problem to make. There is no problem to big. God, can God solve cannot it. solve it. There is no mountain to fall. He cannot move.
Lord is showing a person who has uh, something in the throat and because of this his, that person is worried whether it could be something more and the Lord is saying I'm touching and healing you right now hallelujah hallelujah Lord praise you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 praise you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus praise you Lord hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is touching and healing eczema a person who's having eczema the Lord is touching and healing that person right now hallelujah hallelujah Lord thank you Jesus praise you Lord hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus praise you Lord somebody who has a wound on the leg the Lord is touching and healing that person hallelujah Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah praise you Lord hallelujah 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 praise you Lord hallelujah many people with the pain jaw pains neck pains shoulder pains back pains the lord is touching and healing them right now hallelujah thank you jesus praise you lord hallelujah praise you father hallelujah thank you for your mighty presence hallelujah thank you for your glory thank you for your miracles lord hallelujah praise you lord thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah yes mighty holy spirit lord we welcome you into this place lord all we have is words all we have is thoughts all we have is ideas, music. Lord, only you can anoint our words with your presence. Only you can do a miracle in our hearts, Lord. Lord, come and open our hearts to see the face of Jesus. Yes, Lord, come and open the door of our hearts and the ears of our faith, Lord. And may we know you in a mighty way tonight, Lord. Lord, we pray that no one who came here goes back the same way they came without experiencing you, Lord. And for everything that you do, for all that you do, Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a vehicle. Uh, C A O uh, zero eight double zero. Uh, your shutters are down. Uh, before all the mosquitoes get in, you can go and close the shutters. C A O zero eight double zero. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, uh, today, uh, as we start, we are leading up to the Feast of Pentecost, and uh, during uh, the past weeks, uh, we were leading to this day, the Feast of Pentecost. So uh, in Rome, Italy, as I said before, uh, together with the Feast of Pentecost is celebrated the Feast of the Catholic Charismatic Movement. So, uh, sorry, not the Feast, the 50-year Jubilee. So uh, this experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's uh, such an important thing for our Christian lives, the, ex the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why is it so important? Jesus came so that we can have the Holy Spirit. It says in Matthew uh, 3, verse 11. Shall we put Matthew 3, 11? Yeah, Matthew 3, 11. This is John the Baptist saying, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So one of the main reasons Jesus came was to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. So why is it so important? 
Last week, Lalit Tata uh, spoke about uh, transactions and transformation. So how uh, most of us live in the life of tra transactions. Because uh, we always see, you know, even in companies, in businesses, what is the benefit to me? What is the be benefit to my company? What is the profit? What do I get out of this transaction, out of this deal? Always living in the world of transactions. Even in our spiritual lives, we are living in the world of transactions. When a crisis comes, when a situation comes, we pray more. We, uh, you know, we fast and pray. We pray extra in the day because we want an answer to the crisis. But when the crisis is not there, when the situation is not there, oh Lord, I'm busy, I have so this work to do, I have so many things to do, I don't have time to pray. But when the crisis comes, we are praying. We somehow find the time to pray. Why? Because we are living in the world of transactions. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But Jesus came and lived in a life of transformation. He's, he lived a transformational life. He, he didn't live in the world of transactions. He lived in the transformation. How did he do that? In the power of the Holy Spirit, he had a relationship with the Father. And in that relationship, because of the relationship, he gave inner responses to the situations of life. He gave inner responses to the crisis of life. And because he gave inner responses, his life itself was transformational. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do we know that? Because when Jesus on the cross faced death, faced the agony of the cross, faced the ridicule of the cross, the pain of the cross, because he gave inner response to the Father, because his connection was with the Father, death itself was transformed. Death was transformed to life. The, the resurrection came out of his death. And the grave witnessed the resurrection. Everything was transformed. Sin was transformed. The power of sin was broken because of the power of, of the cross. Why? Because Jesus gave a transformational life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Christian life is not a life lived in transaction of selfishness and self-centeredness. But the Christian life is a transformational life lived in the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, uh, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians uh, 12 verse 3. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We can say Jesus is an excellent teacher. We can say Jesus is a great miracle worker. We can say that Jesus' doctrine is excellent. But we can never say that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to say that Jesus is Lord? He is the one who supplies my needs. He is the one who looks after my life. He is the one in control of my life. Jesus is my Lord. Because in the early church, one of the main reasons for persecution was the Christians refused to say that Caesar is Lord. They said Jesus is Lord. Because they said that, they died. And St. Paul is saying, without the power of the Holy Spirit, no one is able to say that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what is, uh, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What, what is this? Let's look at Mark 1, 9. Mark 1, verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee 
and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So who was this John? John the Baptist. And who was Jesus? Jesus was the one who John the Baptist, earlier we read, John the Baptist said, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. So this Jesus, whose sandals that John the Baptist is not worthy to carry, goes to John the Baptist and humbles himself to be baptized by him. Because Jesus humbled himself, something amazing takes place. Look at this verse 10. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And a voice from heaven. You are my son whom I love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we give a hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your love, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Three things happen when we experience this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those who are writing down can write down. You start hearing his voice. You start hearing God's voice. You start knowing his love. And you start, third thing, you start living in relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These three things take place in the life of a person who is baptized in the Holy Spirit. Those who have heard the four steps, you all, many of you all would have heard the experience of uh, Lalit Tata, uh, how he shares. Uh, in the four steps, while uh, he came to this initial experience, but he found that uh, he could not overcome his addiction to alcohol, and he had fallen back into that place, and he was drunk and going on the road. And as he was walking on the road, he heard a voice that said inside him, go to church. The voice said, go to church. And another voice said, it's no use. Don't go to church. God is a lie. You, what you experienced is a lie. Everything is a lie. Go back to your old life. And he was fighting these two things. One voice saying, go to church. The other voice saying, walk away from this. And he fought this. And he went to, the, went to St. Philip Neri's church in Petah and sat down in the last bench. And he sat down at the church. And he's, he was thinking, what kind of a prayer does a drunkard pray? What kind of a prayer does a drunkard pray? And he, as he was seated there, suddenly he says he heard the voice of God. And God spoke to him in his heart and said, I love you not because you were trying to get, uh, overcome alcoholism, not because you gave up drinking. He, and he heard the voice saying, even if you are the worst drunkard on earth, I will still love you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give a hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. The moment he heard this voice, he, he suddenly experienced the love of God. And he says, he broke down in tears. And then he said, oh my God, if you love me so much, from this day on, I give up drinking. And he stood up from there, completely transformed his entire life. And he followed the Lord from that day onwards. Why? Because he first heard the voice of his father. He experienced the love of God. And he found the relationship of the father. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. It's the same with our own lives. It's the same with all of our, li our lives who have experienced the Lord, including myself. You know, I was living uh, in the world of uh, rationale, thinking, you know, God wasn't true. God is not real. God is dead. There is nothing, you know, there is no God. Uh, look at the evil that's happening in this world. Look at the suffering that's happening in this world. How can there exist? A God. That's what. That's the way I was living. And one day, uh, they bought the movie of the Passion of the Christ to the, our house. Me and my brother sat together and watched it. And as I was watching this, you know, I'm saying, oh, look. Jesus believed that God was his father. Jesus believed that God loved him. And look what happened to him. God is a lie. And again, there's another voice inside of me which is saying, no, God is real. God is alive. Why are thousands of people worshipping him? Why did they give their lives in the Colosseums of Rome? The lions ate them, but still they believed. How come did that happen? And I went to bed thinking of this in my heart. I was thinking, Thinking, is God real? Is God alive? So confused. And as I was, uh, as I went to sleep that night, I saw this dream. It was just like uh, in the movie. There was a person that was scourging Jesus, and. This person was not the Roman soldier, but it was me. I was the one who was hitting him with the whip. With every single moment that I rejected him, with every single thing that I said that God is not a lie, living a sinful life, every single thing I did was a scourge on his back. But he turned around and looked at me with eyes of fire. There was fire in his eyes, and that fire said that he, whatever Whatever I did, whatever I am doing to him, he loves me anyway. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And yes, let's give a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, your everlasting love, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. And because of that look, I will never forget that till the day I die, the way he looked at me and the fire in his eyes, because of that look. I came for the meetings for the first time in my life because I wanted uh, to know the truth. Before that, I used to be dragged to the meetings, forced to the meetings. And you know, as I was walking uh, here, I remember I was there right at the back itself. And uh, I used to tell myself, uh, I will never be caught even dead on that stage. And as I came here, the Holy Spirit reminded me, look what I have done and uh, what I have done through you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. And that day, as uh, at the meeting, uh, I came for three meetings. I had been to these meetings from my smallest days, and I was used to this experience. So I w came for three meetings. Uh, nothing happened. I was used to all this. Uh, on the third meeting, they spoke of the love of God. They spoke that God, like uh, Tatashat, that God loves you with an everlasting love. And no matter what you have done, He loves you. And He loves you more than you love your own self. And uh, if you believe in that love, He will come into your life and transform you. And I was seated somewhere there. I remember it was in the fourth row. Uh, during the worship, I said, uh, Jesus, if you are really alive, if you really love me like this, show me how much you love me. Show me that you're alive. Show me how much you love me. And as I said that, I felt like a smoke come from behind me and covered me from over my head, covered me completely. And I felt this electric current go right through me. And this love that I had never known that existed in this universe went right through my soul. It was as if these waves of love were flowing right through me. And my whole body began to shake and cry. And I fell there on the ground couldn't believe that God, the God of heaven, the creator of the whole universe would love me like this. Uh, me, a sinner, me, a person who rejected him, a person who said that he is not real, he would love me the, this way. And that 
transformed my life. It transformed everything, changed everything, because I heard, experienced his love and enter in, entered into a relationship with him. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, as we are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost and the 50th Jubilee of the Charismatic uh, Renewal, uh, th these uh, messages, before we come and uh, present these messages, we sit and uh, discuss everything with Lalitata. He's the one who gives all the messages for us to share. So he told, uh, because it's the 50th Jubilee, to speak about the history of the Charismatic Renewal and how it started. So I'll be speak, talking to you about church history. Uh, so without falling asleep, you have to listen to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So uh, in the 19th century, in the 19th century, there was a nun called Blessed Elena Guerra in Italy. Uh, she is the founder of the Oblate Sisters of the Holy Spirit in Lucia, Italy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This nun had dedicated her life to the Holy Spirit. She was, uh, she was, uh, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit was her, her entire theme of her life. She had dedicated her life to the Holy Spirit. And she always prayed for the Holy Spirit. And she wrote a letter to that, the Pope at that time. His name was His Holiness Pope Leo the 13th. She wrote a letter to the Pope saying, lead the church back to the upper room. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She wrote not one letter. After that, over a period of eight years, she wrote 12 letters to the Pope, telling him these are the things she said. Invite the faithful to rediscover the life lived according to the Holy Spirit. These are her own words. Call a pray, uh, renewal of the church, a reunion, a reunion of Christianity, and a renewal of society itself, and in and through that, a renewal of the whole earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She said, renew the experience of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. He, he came and he came and spread throughout the nations and the church was born on that day. It's amazing how God's perfect timing. You know, uh, the Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, the meaning of the Feast of Pentecost, uh, it's a Jewish feast and it's the Feast of the Harvest. And God's timing is so amazing because Jesus died on the day of the Passover. What is the Passover? The Passover was when the Israelites came out of bondage and slavery of Egypt. And through the blood of Jesus, the entire world was to come out of bondage and slavery of sin. And Jesus himself said, if a grain of wheat does not fall to the ground and die, it will remain only a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it will grow. So with the death of Jesus, that seed that was crushed on the ground, with his own blood that was shed here on Pentecost, came the harvest, the harvest of souls. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So. She said on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. But afterwards, there were the saints who were led by the Holy Spirit. There were the uh, people who lived a monastic life and a holy life. They were led by the Holy Spirit. But the experience of the Holy Spirit from the people was less in the church. So this sister told the Pope, invite the church back into this experience. What happened? Amazingly, this Pope listened to her and he wrote a circular 
to send to all the bishops and all the cardinals in the world saying, dedicating the 20th century as the century of the Holy Spirit. He dedicated the century as the century of the Holy Spirit. And an amazing thing happened on that very day, on that very day that he sent out that circular, there was an experience and a, and a baptism of the Holy Spirit that took place outside of the Catholic Church. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, but not within the church. So the church remained untouched. But in 1965, there came the Second Vatican Council. And when the Second Vatican Council came, it was Pope, uh, His Holiness Pope John the 23rd. Uh, when the Second Vatican Council came, he said, open the doors of the church to the wind of the Spirit. He said, open the doors of the church to the wind of the Holy Spirit. But as the, as the Vatican Council was going on, uh, the Holy Spirit was not included initially in the Vatican Council. There, then there was this cardinal, Cardinal Suanes from Belgium. You know, God raised the people. Cardinal Suanes from Belgium. He came and he insisted include the Holy Spirit in the Vatican Council. Ho include the documents of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the life of the Holy Spirit. We need him in the church. Include him in the Vatican Council. And because he pushed it, they included the Holy Spirit in the Second Vatican Council. And in 1967, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, there was a university called the Duquesne University, a Catholic university dedicated to the Holy Spirit. And in that university, there were was, there was some professors and some students who had seen the working miracles of the Holy Spirit outside the church. They got together and they prayed over a weekend. They prayed and said, Lord, send a, a new Pentecost. Send a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they prayed throughout the weekend, but nothing happened. And as they prayed, there was this day that they were getting ready for this birthday party of one of the students there. They were getting ready for this party, and uh, they were all busy getting ready. And this one student, uh, she went up to get a, a cloth for the table for this birthday party. When she went up, she never returned back down. And these other uh, people wondered what happened to her. And this person, another person went up. And she, uh, that person also didn't come. And another, and another. And in, uh, in the end, all of them had come under the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit before the blessed sacrament. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we give a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your mighty works in the Catholic Church. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. And this began the, fifth, uh, the Catholic charismatic movement. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, these students went around talking about what happened here. And this news came to Cardinal Suanes. And he went to this university, Duquesne, to see what was happening here. And uh, he didn't go as a cardinal. He went as a theologian. He went as a theologian, di uh, disguised as a theologian, who wanted to study. And he wanted to learn this. And he went there and he found the uh, baptism, he found what is happening here. And he said, this is a sovereign act of God. And this is what we have been praying for. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. And he formed a committee, took that committee to Brussels, his parish in Brussels, and from there started the Catholic charismatic movement. And now we are celebrating 50 years of this movement. And in 1976, uh, through Father Oscar Abe Ratner, who, who was touched and came to this experience in England, he brought this experience to this nation through the, through the Pupudua. And uh, in 1977, Lalit Tata and everybody was involved in this experience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this happened just like it happened in the early church. What happened in the early church? Let's look at Acts 2, 1.
Acts 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered together in one place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What had happened here? Jesus uh, died. He rose from the dead. He was with them and he went back to heaven. And as he was going back to heaven, he told the disciples, go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. He told them to go back and wait. And here they are, in the upper room, they are waiting. So nothing's happening, just like it, uh, in the Catholic charismatic movement, they were waiting and nothing was happening. But there was someone who was with them, a person who had experienced the Holy Spirit before in her life, a person who knew the power of the Holy Spirit. She knew who the Holy Spirit was, a person who was at the foot of the cross, the person who believed at the death that no, God will provide where there seems to be no way. She was the blessed mother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She was there at the day of Pentecost, waiting together with the disciples, telling St. Peter and all the apostles, no, trust in God. God will do something. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. And as they were waiting, what happened? Verse 2. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came down from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As they were waiting, just as it happened in the university, suddenly a wind filled the house. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. Verse 3. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them, next verse, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something amazing happened in this moment. Jesus said uh, in the Gospels, he raised the dead, he cleansed the lepers, he did mighty miracles, and he told the disciples, greater things than this you will do. Because I am going. I am going, and because I am going, he will come. Who? The Holy Spirit. And Jesus said uh, to St. Thomas, he said, You believe because you have seen. Blessed are they who will believe who have not seen. Why? He, is it because of our faith? Ble the ones who are believing without seeing is you and me. Why? We, he said, Jesus is saying, they are more blessed than you. How can, how can uh, the, we be more blessed than St. Peter who saw Jesus transfigured? How can we be more blessed than St. Peter who saw Jesus walking on the water? How can we be more blessed than when they saw the bread multiply in their very hands? How can we be more blessed? Because we will believe because of the revelation of the Holy Spirit gives in our hearts. And that's what happened at Pentecost. Suddenly he came, St. Peter stood up, he preached one sermon, 2,000 people believed. Two sermons, 3,000. Two sermons, 5,000 people believed. This was the same St. Peter who got scolded by Jesus for telling the wrong thing at the wrong time. He preached and 5,000 believed. And as he walked the streets of Jerusalem, his shadow fell on the sick 
and they were healed. Why? The Holy Spirit had made Jesus who was with them, Jesus who was with them for three years, who talked, spoke, ate, drank, and performed miracles, this Jesus had become more real to St. Peter within his heart. And he, as his shadow fell, it was the shadow of Jesus Christ himself that fell on those sick people. And as they were walking to the temple, there was that beggar who, who could not walk. He asked for money from them. And what did he say? Silver or gold, we do not have. But what we have, we will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And because he stood up and walked, they captured them and took them before the Sanhedrin. Before the Sanhedrin. And they asked, with what authority do you do this? And this same St. Peter who said, denied the Lord, who said, I do not know him. I do not know him. I have never seen this man before in my life. The same St. Peter stood up before the Sanhedrin and said, The author of life, you crucified on a cross and killed him. But God has raised him from the dead and given him the name that is above every other name. And in the authority and the power of that name, we have raised this man up. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? He, St. Peter, who was in fear, who was afraid of everything, suddenly, in the power of the Holy Spirit, was bold, stood up and witnessed to Christ. And they said, don't ever mention that name here again. And what did St. Peter said? Even if you kill us, we will not stop preaching in that name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such was the transformation in his life to the extent when they captured him and took him to be crucified. The church tradition teaches us that he said, I am not worthy to be crucified the way my Lord and Master was crucified. Crucify me upside down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. The Holy Spirit had come. Not only St. Peter, St. Paul, Saul, you know, the Bible says he was the one who was holding the cloak of St. Stephen, Stephen as he was being stoned. This same Saul, while he was on his way to Damascus, he met the risen Christ. He was fallen, his eyesight blinded, brought down to zero, and uh, he was told to go to Damascus and Ananias came and prayed over him and he received the Holy Spirit and this same Saul who killed who was there when St Stephen was being stoned wrote in the book of Galatians for it is not I now I have been crucified with Christ and this life I live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me hallelujah hallelujah Lord praise you Lord, hallelujah, transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. St. Thomas, who said, I will never believe that he has risen from the dead until I touch his wounds. And the, uh, Jesus came and showed his wounds. He came under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The life transformed, took this gospel and brought it all the way to India and preached the gospel in India and died in India and shed his blood there. And up to today, there are the churches, there are the places that he established. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was within them. He was within them. Suddenly, the 5,000 became 10,000, 15,000, 100,000. They could not stop it. They took their children, tradition, church tradition teaches us that as they took the children of the early church uh, Christians and they made the parents watch their children being eaten by wild animals. And it says, as they watched, they praised and thanked God. How can you praise and thank in a situation like that? Why? Because the Holy Spirit had made Jesus more real to them than anything else in life. 
life. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This spread across the entire face of the earth until Jesus' name had divided history itself into two. That's why uh, Napoleon Bonaparte uh, says uh, in his writings, he says, who is this Jesus Christ? I have raised an army. I have captured nations. I have ruled the world. But I have seen the very kingdom and the very army that I raised come crashing down before my very eyes. And I have lost everything. But who is this man, Jesus Christ, who lived for 33 years, who did not walk beyond Galilee, who did not do anything but after his name has divided history into two and he's been worshipped by millions of people who is this man why because the holy spirit came down on the day of pentecost and through that experience in the church we received that experience and it had spread across the Catholic charismatic movement, more than 20 million people coming under this experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. But the experience of the Holy Spirit, it's a beginning. It's not the end. It's only a beginning into a life of holiness. The problem is we think the moment we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, everything is fine, we know everything, but it's only an entrance, a beginning into a life lived in holiness. Look at this, John 20, verse 21. John 20, 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How did the Father send Jesus? Look at the next verse, verse 22. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus came in the power of the Holy Spirit. He came in the power of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit gave him the relationship with the Father. He was in relationship with the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. We are sent, first of all, within us to carry, to walk into holiness to walk into this experience, to be transformed, to walk in this experience of the Holy Spirit, and then to represent Christ himself into this world. Look at the next verse, verse 23. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What does that mean? When we go in this experience of the Holy Spirit, when we carry the Holy Spirit within us, first of all, He gives us the grace to give inner responses. That's what Christ did. He gave inner response to death. He gave inner response to the ones who had attacked Him, abused Him, and killed Him. The same power comes within us and we are given the grace to give inner responses. And as we give inner responses, those whose sins are forgiven shall be forgiven. What does that mean? They will also come to know the power of the Holy Spirit in and through our own lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. From us, 
they will come to know. That's why Jesus said, if you believe in me, from out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And uh, in the Gospel of John, St. John goes on to explain what does, what does these rivers of living water mean. It means the Holy Spirit who was not yet given, he says in the, in the Gospel. Out of our innermost being, the Holy Spirit will flow into the world, into a lost and dying world. And they will also come to know this Jesus whom we carry. There's this beautiful story. I have told this in many other places that I have gone to preach. I don't you all must have all, some of you all must have heard it. But I'll tell it again. Amazing story, uh, this testimony of a, of a Chinese person. You know, uh, in China, it, it was illegal, Christianity was banned, and you're not allowed to uh, spread Christianity. But this person was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thousands were coming for his meetings. Amazing miracles were happening. And uh, he was in America in this book I was reading. This reporter comes and asks him, what's the highlight of your life, in your life? What's the greatest thing that has happened in your life? The greatest miracle that has happened in your life. And he, continue, he tells this story, amazing story. He says he was caught uh, by the Chinese uh, 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 government and put into prison and uh, tortured to give up Christ. But he, he refused to give up Christ. And it came to a point that he could not bear this uh, torture anymore. And he thought, I am going to die as a martyr. And he stopped eating his food because he wanted to die as a martyr. But he was getting weaker, he, uh, weaker and weaker. Uh, but he was not dying. It continued on to a point he could not even lift himself up, but still he was not dying. And he prayed to the Lord and asked, Lord, why am I not dying? I want to die and I'm not dying. And the Lord says, I have a mission for you in this prison. And he says, okay, Lord, I surrender my life to you again. Do your will in my life. And he went into prison. And as he was in prison, there in the evenings, the prisoners get together and they sing all sorts of uh, uh, song, uh, things, you know, all uh, obscene language songs. And they invited him and told, come and sing with us. And then uh, he came and sang hymns to the Lord. And as he was singing, the Holy Spirit came there. And they all started crying. And they were touched and transformed. And to the point that entire prison cell started changing. And the warden who was in charge of this prison called him and said, I can see what's happening because of you. So the, the way the people are changing because of you, I am taking you and putting you to this another cell where there are the worst criminals in the prison. And I am putting you uh, kind of like in charge there. And he said, please don't do that. I, I don't know how to control these men. I don't want to hit people and control. Please don't do that. Then this uh, warden says, no, you don't have to hit anybody or do anything. Just do what you have been doing here. You go and do it there. And he went there. And as he was saying, there was this uh, serial killer. This per uh, serial killer is a person who is addicted to killing. So he, there was this serial killer. His crimes were so bad. His crimes were so bad that the other prisoners had got together and beaten him so badly that he, his hands were broken and he could not eat for himself. And on Sundays, these prisoners are given a special meal. They are given a special meal on Sundays. And when this man got his meal, he heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus saying, take your meal and go and feed it to that prisoner. And suddenly he said, you know, I have done so much for you, Lord, but I can't do that. I have been waiting this whole week to eat this meal. And that was the hardest thing for him to do, to go and give this meal up. He struggled with that for uh, so many weeks. But the, uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit within him was so strong, he could not, re it came to a point, he says, I could not resist anymore. He took his meal and went and fed it to this man. And as he was feeding this to this man, he began to cry. He broke down and cried. And he said, do you know who I am? Do you know the things that I have done? Do you know who I am? Why is it 
that you show me such mercy. And then he said, it's not me, it's Jesus. And this man did not know who Jesus was. He said, show me Jesus so I can go and thank him. Then he said, no, Jesus is my Lord. He's the one who, who told me to come and do this to you. And he explained to him about Christ and prayed for him. And as he prayed, the, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit fell on this man. And the most amazing thing is, this man was being taken to be executed because of his crimes. Uh, he wrote a letter to his mother with his own blood because he could not write with his hands. And he gave this letter to this man and said, the day that you come out of this prison, please go and give this letter to my mother. And he takes this letter and goes and gives this to his mother. And he says, the greatest moment in my life was as his mother opened this letter and read it out loud. It said, Mom, today is the day that they execute me because of the crimes that I have committed. And he says, don't be afraid. I am not going to hell. Jesus has saved me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your mercy, for your grace, for your love, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is what all of us are called for to carry the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First into holiness, first into our own holiness, our, our own sins to be broken, our own bondages to be broken, our own uh, addictions to be broken, and second, to carry his experience and love into the world that we live in. How do we start? We start from the four steps. We come as we are. We are weak. We are broken. We don't know what to do. We come as we are. We give the truth of our hearts. We say, Lord, I don't know how to do this. I am addicted. I am sinful. This is my weakness. Lord, please help me and surrender his life. And as we surrender, the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon our life. I'd like to look at the very words of Blessed uh, Sister uh, Elena, what she wrote. These are her own writings. Look at these words. Pentecost is not over. In fact, it is continually going on in every time and in every place. Because the Holy Spirit desired to give himself to all men, and all who want him can always receive him. So we do not have to envy the apostles and the first believers. We only have to dispose ourselves like them to receive him well. What is that? The four steps, come as you are, give the truth of your heart, surrender your life to Jesus. And what happens? And he will come as to us as he did to them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we give a mighty hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. So tonight, as we come into this, his presence, as we come into this worship, let's ask the Lord, Lord, we give the truth of our hearts, surrender our lives to him, and Lord, through your grace, through your mercy, come into my life and do this amazing miracle in my heart and in my life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
of the living God, the one who created the universe, the one who moved over the waters in the darkness, the one who called light out of darkness, spirit of the living God, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of the Father, the one who spoke through the prophets, the one who parted the Red Seas, the one who brought fire down from heaven when Elijah prayed, the one who burns the sacrifice on the altar, the one who moves the mountains, the one who anointed kings and nations, the one who brought down nations, mighty spirit of the living God, the one who took the eternal God who is, has no end, who has no beginning, who is all powerful and in one moment made him flesh and indwelling child in the mother, in the womb of the blessed mother, mighty spirit of the living God. The one who performed the miracles through the sun. The one who was with the sun on this earth. The one who raised the dead. The one who gave sight to the blind. Mighty Spirit of God. The one on the cross took the son of the living God and made him an atonement for our sins. Holy Spirit, you are the one who Jesus died for to send to us. Holy Spirit, just like as you did in Duquesne, in the University of Duquesne, before the blessed sacrament, mighty presence of the Lord. Come right now, before the Eucharist, before this blessed sacrament. Come through our brokenness. Break through the cloud. Rip it open. Tear the skies open. The skies of unbelief. The skies of doubt. The skies of darkness. The skies of sin. The skies of bondage. Tear it open and come down into our very lives, Lord. Into our hearts with your fire, with your glory, with your mighty presence. Be because there is nothing worth more in this life than your presence, Lord, than you walking with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come as you did in the upper room. Come as you did in Pentecost. Come as you did in the, in the university. Come like you did through the lives of the saints, through the history of the church, the men and women you raised in your power and might. Lord, come into our lives and raise us up in your glory, in your fire, and transform us in from sin to holiness, from darkness to the glory of your light. Transform our hearts, transform our lives. Mighty Holy Spirit, come right now. Come with your fire. Come with your anointing. Come with your glory. Come, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord.
provision of the Holy Spirit, His mighty presence, like a dove, a giant dove in this hall, a dove on fire. And through Him, there is this fire coming into each and every person's life. And the Lord is saying, tonight, I give you that anointing to walk in holiness, to walk in my glory, to walk in my presence. And in and through you, I'm going to touch and transform this nation and this world and your life, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 For your anointing comes on the weak, on the broken, on the lost, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your presence, your presence, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Lord is also showing a person who is having a heart disease, artery is blocked. The Lord is saying, I'm touching and healing you right now, tonight in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord is showing a person who is having arthritis pain in the joints. Lord is touching and healing those arthritis. You're feeling like fire in those places and that's the healing touch of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord is speaking to a person who is praying for that person's family to come and know the Lord and the Lord is saying carry my presence, carry my spirit in your heart and I will touch and transform them in and through you though you are weak though you are sinful i will do that miracle in your life and your family says the lord hallelujah praise you lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise you lord hallelujah praise you father hallelujah 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 thank you jesus the lord is touching a person's liver disease and he's healing it right now the lord is saying you are healed in my glory hallelujah thank you jesus praise you father hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody's uh, sickness on the tongue, the Lord is touching and healing that right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For your presence that's moving here, for your glory, your healing touch that's moving in our lives, that's moving in our midst. Your presence, Lord. Your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord is touching a person who is having a financial crisis the Lord is saying give me your life surrender it to me and I will be your Lord and I will lead you to the end of your life in glory and riches you have never known before says the Lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Lord hallelujah, thank hallelujah, you Jesus praise you father your presence oh Lord your presence is here Lord you are here in our midst Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus praise you father hallelujah Hallelujah. Lord is showing me a person who has a dull hearing. Lord say, I have touched you. Your ears can pop up and you can hear it now, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Lord is showing me a person who was addicted to many things in life. You are keeping it secretly, but I am taking it out now because you wanted to. You have come for the first time. I am healing you. I have delivered you. I have given you a new life, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a person who is praying for a person who is in hospital with dengue, very serious. You are wondering whether this child will fall, die, the Lord says, no, today I will restore this child, and in two days' time, this child will go home, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. You, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. 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 There is a misunderstanding with a colleague, and you are very depressed now. You are wondering whether to quit the job. The Lord says, today I have given you a heart to go and reconcile. Do not quit the job, says the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is speaking to a person who has a problem with this person's right hand. 
and because of this can't use the hand properly. The Lord says, my child, I am touching, healing and restoring you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you Father. Mahen, Karu, Gamini, Desmond, my children. See, I have this beautiful plan for you, and tonight I'm inviting you. Surrender to me and receive my spirit, says Hallelujah. the Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is also speaking to a person. This person has some connection, either uh, factory. This person has a connection with lead, leather products. The Lord is saying, my child, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, I'm your God and you are my child, says Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise Thank you. you, Jesus. God is speaking to a person who's having hole in the heart. And God says, I am the healer. I have touched you and healed you, says the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God is also speaking to a person here who's afraid of darkness due to an incident which has taken place. And God says, tonight I'm going to take this fear out of you, says the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is speaking to someone who is in a rented house and needs to vacate the house by the fifth. The Lord says, my daughter, by the third, I have already found a house, and you can go into the house, says the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord you, is also speaking to my three. The Lord says, my son, I see your struggle. Today, I have come to rescue you, says the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get ready to receive the blessing of the Blessed Sacrament. Given them bread from heaven. Heaven in its heart. Let us pray. Oh God, you who in this wonderful sacrament have left us the memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to reveal the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. O oh, live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be a holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be a glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. So I stand and sing this final hymn, giving all the glory, all the honor, all the praise to the one who is worthy of it all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for us and sent his spirit into our lives, touched and transformed our hearts and renewed our lives in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the one who is worthy of our praise, of our glory, of our worship, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it all, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord.
our lives, the one who lives in us, the one who lives with us, Jesus, to you be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise forever and ever and ever, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise the 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 Lord. Those who have a word of knowledge to claim, you could come and come upstairs and claim it. Praise the Lord. This sister is claiming uh, two words of knowledge. One is for her sister who has a severe, uh, serious heart problem. And there was a word of knowledge today. So she is claiming that for her sister, that her sister is healed. And she, al she also has arthritis. And she'll be going to Rome tomorrow. So things will be difficult. But she's claiming that the Lord has healed her. And she also has another word that she's claiming. Also, she has a son who is rejecting the Lord, but she believes uh, the word that was given today that through her, that the Lord will bring her son to Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. This sister is claiming the word of knowledge that was given for a family transformation. She has been praying for her brother and family, brother and his family, and she believes that the Lord will bring her brother back to the Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, she also has a sister who's suffering from arthritis. And she claims the word of knowledge that was given today that her sister is healed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. This is claiming four words of knowledge. One is for the healing of her spine. The other is for the healing of her throat and also for the rash. And also there was another word of knowledge that was given that uh, through a person's prayers that this person's family is transformed. She is claiming that her family is transformed because she has been praying for her family to know the Lord. And she's claiming that word of knowledge. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is claiming three words of knowledge. One is for herself that she, she believes that she